before starting this lab procedure, make sure that you read all of the safety information that is provided for you. Very important, there should be no open flames anywhere near to the setup of your experiment. So make sure the area in which you set up is far away from any heat sources such as your stove, a candle, or anything like that. Set up all of your apparatus and materials in a logical manner on a clean, flat surface. This, of course, requires that you read through the instructions beforehand and you make a list of all the required pieces of apparatus and materials and then you lay them out logically so that you can easily reach to each one as that step comes. The first thing we're going to do is to prepare our alcohol because that needs to be kept cold. So we are going to measure approximately 15 mils. In the lab we use measuring cylinders such as this one. But at home what you can do instead is use a tablespoon of rubbing alcohol and you're going to pour it into the measuring container. So I have measured the alcohol, the appropriate amount of alcohol, into this large boiling tube. And I am now going to store it in an ice bath, which can be simply a large container filled with ice. It's very important that you keep the alcohol cold. So we are setting this aside until we need this for another step. The next thing that we're going to do is to prepare our solution. This solution should contain tap water or if the quality of the water in your area is not optimal and it's cloudy or it's brown, you can use boiled, cooled tap water. In the lab we use distilled water and into this distilled water we are going to add approximately 10 mils of dish soap or two teaspoonfuls of dish soap such as squeezy or any other kind of dishwashing liquid that you have at home. We're adding this to a 250 mil beaker that's the size of the beaker here or you can use a large cup to add your soap into the water. After the soap is in the water and you have shaken it gently to create a, a solution, you want to add a spatula full or a tablespoon at home of salt. So I have added it already, but I'm showing you what I would have done. Added the salt into here and then used a stirring rod to make sure that all parts of my solution are mixed in properly. Now, I want to stir a little bit carefully to avoid making too much foam. So I've created a few bubbles of foam here so what I'm going to do is use this paper towel and gently remove some of the foamy bubbles from my soap solution. The idea is you want to create a solution, yes, but not by stirring it too vigorously. Vigorous stirring would create more bubbles, which would interfere with your ability to see the DNA.
The next step is to cut my banana Remove the peel. Cut it into some smaller pieces to make it easier to macerate or to create a, a nice mushy mix. So here, I am using a, a mortar and pestle, which is available in the lab. You may have a mortar and pestle at home that you can use. If not, what you can do instead, and I will demonstrate for you, is to use a large Ziploc bag. So, for the purposes of demonstrating what you can do at home, in the absence of a mortar and pestle, I'm going to transfer the banana into this large Ziploc bag here. Seal it closed. And then, well, I still have my pestle here, but you can use a large pot spoon or anything else. And you simply crush it so that you get extremely fine pieces of banana in here. The idea behind the crushing is to be able to destroy the cell walls so that it will be easier to extract the DNA from inside the nuclei of the cells of this banana. Luckily, banana is a very easy to squish fruit. So it's in a, it's in a nice pasty appearance right now. The next step is to remove the, the crushed banana. You can use a, a spoon or in my case, I'm using the, the spatula and I'm going to try to, to scrape out as much of this crushed banana as I can. Now into this crushed banana, I'm going to add a few centimeters of the soapy solution that I created in the previous step. Actually, I can add a little bit more. And then I'm going to pour this back into the beaker or the large cup that you have at home. And you will set that aside. And continue stirring this for approximately one minute. Okay. 
Now, in order to get a runnier solution, I'm going to use the rest of the soapy salt water solution that I had used previously or made previously. Stir that around until I'm sure that there are no large pieces of the of the banana left. Once I'm sure that the banana has almost completely dissolved in the soapy solution, I will then use my, my strainer or my sieve and I want to get rid of all the large pieces. So by having done all of that mixture, I should have broken down the cell walls of the banana cells and released some of the DNA from within the nuclei of these banana cells. So we're pouring this into here. Just to make sure that it does not overflow. You may not need all of the solution that you have created. set aside the strained banana so in this container I should now hopefully have some banana DNA so in my next step I'm going to transfer approximately four teaspoons or 20 mils using my measuring cylinder again I can measure the 20 mils And you can use your, your teaspoon. All of the alternatives, remember, are given to you in the description of the procedure, the alternatives to the equipment that you may have at home. So make sure in advance to read through all of the instructions so that you can collect the necessary pieces of equipment and the materials that you need. Now to this, I am going to add this to a boiling tube or a large cup, pouring it on the side like that. <clears throat> and then my isopropyl alcohol that was chilling in the in the water bath. I'm now going to slowly add the alcohol to the mixture containing the banana. So I'm slowly pouring it into that mixture. that there. <clears throat> so now this mixture is going to be set aside for 10 minutes. So we start the, the clock for 10 minutes. At the end of 10 minutes, what you should observe in your boiling tube is the separation of the DNA from the banana cells, which you can see as a, as a cloudy layer in the middle of the boiling tube. The other contents, all of the other cell debris and so on, are at the bottom of the tube and the rest of the alcohol is on top. So you should see something like this in your container at the end of the procedure. 
what you can then do is to use a long toothpick or screwing rod or anything like that insert it into here and rotate it slowly so that you can pull up your DNA strand. In this shoe, I have extracted my, my DNA and I have put it in this tube. So you can see that this cloudy white mass at the bottom of the tube. And this brings us to the end of this demonstration lab for extracting DNA from banana.